behind all the stern and batter reins. You're nothing but a little boy crying for mommy and daddy. It'd be funny if it wasn't so pathetic. Ah, what the heck? I'll laugh anyway. <laughs> Hello, I just wanted to thank you for clicking on my video, and I wanted to let you know, not only do I create content on my YouTube channel here, Class in a Glass, but I'm also on Twitch, where I play single-player games, multiplayer games, I do movie reviews, cartoon reviews, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Also, it would be a big help if you can check out my Patreon, where you can gain access to uh, audio commentaries, reactions, and the ability to submit questions for my podcasts and video casts. And all that content can be found in the links below. In the meantime, enjoy the video. But for right now, Joe, we got to get the, the, the meat and potatoes, the meat and potatoes of today's stream chat. And the meat and potatoes being the, your, your patron Patreon question chat. As you know, I have a Patreon called Class in a Glass. I'll go ahead and show that to you right now, chat, where you have access to all sorts of content chat, that, I not, that I don't, you know, uh, do on Twitch. But here's uh, his chat, Classic Glass, featuring full audio commentaries and full video reactions to movie films and cartoons. And also, chat, uh, at the Tier 5 level up, you have the ability to submit, uh, submit questions for my Class in the Glass cast for your ass. A little bit of sass, chat. But you can subscribe at a $1, $2, $5, uh, $10, $15, or $25 level. No matter what level you subscribe at, chat, you get access to something. But, of course, at higher levels, you get access to more. The Revenite level, you get access to pretty much all the commentaries, chat, and all the video reactions that I do, every single one, no matter what. And the Juicy Gains the level, chat, you get to choose a film and an episode of a cartoon series for me to do every single month, chat. That's a whole lot of content right there. You can choose. You can pick pick the poison of which I will poison myself with and watch it, chat. It's a good time. It can be a good movie or it can be a bad movie. It can be a horrific film. The choice is indeed yours. Uh, I have a lot of polls up there, chat for uh, uh, this week's uh, films and also next next week's uh, Christmas films. I'm going to start recording some of those commentaries and full video reactions soon. But I have Jingle All The Way, full-length video reaction up there, chat, and audio version. Also, The Muppet Christmas Carol, full-length video and audio version, chat. Uh, I have bonus commentaries like Santa Claus is Coming to Town, chat, video and audio version. All bonus commentaries, as I said before, are available at the $2 level and up. And, of course, a whole bunch of other content. You know, I did How the Grinch Steal, Steal, uh, Stole Christmas, Frosty the Snowman, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, Shaq, Gremlins, all these have been uploaded in the last couple of days. Pretty fun stuff. So if you want to check that out, highly recommend it, chat. I'll be uploading probably Rudolph either tonight or early tomorrow morning. But now, chat, I'm going to ask some questions that were submitted to me by my very generous Patreons. Yes. I'm zero. Wow, that $25 tier is great. Oh, thank you, I'm zero. Yeah, well, you know what? I, I was always like, okay, I don't want to make it too expensive, you know, or anything. But I want to, you know, uh, say like, well, this is, you know, this, yeah, you get to you get to pick the movie, you get to pick the cartoon. So I made it reasonable. I looked at some what other patrons were doing, what they're charging. I was like, okay, I want to go that high. I want to gouge you guys. So I just like, that's 25. Just do 25. And, you know, you, but then, you know, with the $15 level, you still have access to everything, even at the $25 level. So, yeah, tr try to make a reasonable chat. I, you know, I know it's hard out there for a lot of people right now. Just try to try to make everything reasonable and within everyone's means. And but, but, again, at the same time, like, I make all the bonus commentaries available at two dollars so if that's all you can subscribe to then hey you got a, a big glut of commentaries and full video reactions available to you so yeah try to try, i try to be fair i try to be fair chat I, I hate to gouge people especially during this time uh but yeah let's go ahead and get to some questions ace rock you work for me now i don't oh no <laughs> well thank you for subscribing ace rock <laughs> I'm the captain now. <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent. Oh, uh, no, let's get some questions. Funny enough, Ace Rock, I missed, I missed this question that you submitted a while back, and my apologies. And right now, if you happen to be a Tier 5 subscriber that's 15 and up, uh, you can submit some questions right now for me to uh, do. I have about six questions right here right now, which uh, will cover a big chunk of time, but if you want to submit some stuff right now, even if it's just one question, be my guest and go ahead. You, you have you're up to five questions to submit. Honestly, I should just make it a point of just, like, submit as many questions as you want, and we'll get to them. If we don't get to them the, for the entire show, we'll do them next week or something. But uh, this is a question from uh, Thomas Leaf, also known, also known, Chad, as Ace Rock. Uh, very cool question. I like this, Chad. He knows me very well. Juice Bro, in addition to the massive questions that he submitted the, uh, a while ago, Chad, I asked, uh, uh, and I thought of this one. If there is to be another Mass Effect game, which there is, uh, what would be your take on what would games should be about? So I think I've said this before, chat. I've said this before, and thankfully it is indeed happening, chat. 
I've said I've said this for the longest time ever. No, not Andromeda 2, goddammit, no. I've said that the next game in the Mass Effect series should be a return to form chat, a return to the Milky Way galaxy, and we will take on the Persona chat, the character of Shepard once more. That's what I've always wanted, chat. I want to be back in the Milky Way. I want to take place after the events of Mass Effect 3. I want to be with all those characters again, fucking Garrus, Tali Zora, uh, Vos Normandy, Liara chat, Rex... All those people, and and to continue those relationships and friendships, uh, chat, and go on a whole nother adventure. And chat, not not a week ago, well, actually no, exactly a week ago, chat. The VGAs happened, chat. The video game advertisements, as I believe that they are called, chat. Also, maybe called awards, chat. But the majority of it was advertisement. The one, the last trailer that they showed, chat. The very last trailer before they announced the winner of the VGAs, the video game advertisements, chat, was for a Bioware game. And this whole fucking thing opened up, chat. It opened up, and it was like, I didn't know what it was at first. I, did, I had no idea what the fuck it was. I had no goddamn clue. I was like, is this, is this Bethesda's new Starfield game, which has been, you know, in development for uh, quite some time, chat. Their spacefaring RPG. You know, I was like, I wasn't sure. And, you know, Corey and I were going back and forth, and I was like, wait a minute, is this Mass Effect? And I missed it, chat. I missed it. Josh and I were talking about this the other day. I uh, we were uh, I was distracted, chat, because if I if I saw it, I would instantly knew. Uh, it, in one part of the trailer, chat, you see the destroyed Mass Effect relay, the Mass Relay chat. And I, right before, before I was I saw that I, Corey had said something, I was distracted. But then I heard the boom, and it was the sound effect of the Reaper chat. It was Hans Zimmer. It's like if Hans Zimmer was a Leviathan-sized squid monster chat, a mechanical uh, Leviathan-sized squid uh, monster. That's that's what Hans Zimmer would be in a, in a space opera, and that that's what. The Reaper sound is, chat. And I was like, wait a minute. And I instantly went back, chat, and I clutched my pearls, my invisible pearls, and we were then transported down to that icy world, chat. And we saw the Reaper, which I'm like, that's a Reaper in the background. It's the carcass of a giant Reaper, chat. And we follow this lone figure as they're making their way up this mountain peak or something, maybe on another a dead by a Reaper, chat. And they kneel down, they kneel down, chat, and they pick something up from the snow. And of course, they they, they uncover it, they uncover it, chat. They brush the snow away, the ice and everything. And it's the it's Shepherd's N7 logo. And I went, ah! And I squealed like I squealed, Chad, like a little boy and girl. I was it was adorable. It was adorable, Chad, because my heart was filled with so much joy because I realized we were returning the Milky Way galaxy. That was Liara who it was Liara who picked it up. Her 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 hood. Her head, uh, her head was, like, pushed back a bit, and I, I recognized her face. I know those freckles. I know those freckles, chat. And I was like, oh, my God, it's happening. And I I was besides myself. I, cry, I cried. I, I cried. I was like, <laughs> I got a little emotional, chat. I got a little emotional because I've been waiting for this. I love Mass Effect. As I said before, I've told Josh this, chat. I would, I would not be probably doing this without the Mass Effect series. It showed me uh, the, the level of craftsmanship and uh, care that can be put into a video game in terms of its writing and character development and world building. I was like, wow, it really made me appreciate video games. And I wanted me, along with Star Wars Knights of the Puppet that was the other one that, that always did it. But this one kind of cemented it. The Mass Effect series cemented it for me. And I wanted to make a video game as a part of my life and a part of content creation and uh, uh, just, to, just to showcase them and, and both, both what makes them so much fun, but also how they're, they're perfect for storytelling. She had just all, all these different things. And Mass Effect series did that. There it is, she had. There's, there's the reaction. Because, ah, yeah, yeah. There was the reaction. And uh, that's what I've always wanted. I just wanted to return to that world. And it looks like we're going there. I know it's probably way off from now. It's probably years off, but it's like, I'll wait. I'll wait. I, I want Bioware to craft a good game. I know a lot of the same people aren't working on the game as they, yes, yeah, the original trilogy. How, excuse me. However, I want to give them a ch shot, chat. It means a lot to me. So I got really, really excited. Uh, and that's why I always want. Get teary eyed. We wouldn't be moist if I wasn't for Juicy. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, it, it, uh, that's what I've always wanted, and they seem to be doing that. It seems to be taking place immediately after the events of the Reaper War uh, in Mass Effect 3, so it's like, that's what I've always been asking. They, it looks like they're picking the destroy ending as the canon ending, which I'm fine with. You know, fuck canon, it's like, whatever. Do you all oh, destroy ends? No, it's, the destroy ending makes the most sense. We, everyone knows that. You know, if you pick, if you fucking, I've said this before, chat. Control ending is what the elusive man wanted, chat. Control the goddamn Reapers, okay? I'm not fucking Cerberus, okay? I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm a part of a racist human organization that's trying to have human dominance, chat. Fuck the elusive man, okay? Martin Sheen, get your old ass out of there. Bam! Shot him, chat. Actually, I made him, I made him shoot himself, which is fun. But 
I didn't like that. And then there was the synthesis ending. She I was like, no, I'm not doing the synthesis ending. That's what Saren Arturius wanted in Mass Effect 1 chat. The, uh, the combination of flesh and steel, the strengths of both, the weaknesses of neither. I'm like, no, I'm not forcing uh, a, a way of life on a whole group of people chat and like making machines and, 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 and biological organisms combine to one. It's like, no, fuck that. What was the mission chat? What was the mission from the original game? And I've said this a thousand times. Everyone was behind Shepard on this one. My entire crew from game to game to game. What's our mission? To destroy the Reapers, protect the galaxy. And we accomplished that goddamn mission. And I blew the shit out of that fucking space station. And I remembered all my friends. And I and I, it looks like I died, but I didn't die, Chad. I took that final breath. And I'm going to come back. We're going to come back as Shepard. And we're going to save the galaxy. And it's going to be great. I don't know what the threat is, Chad. I, I want it to be very personal. I'll tell you this right now. I want it to be nice spoiler. Well, yeah, you don't. Yeah, it's spoiling an eight-year-old game. <laughs> Rass is a juicy voice. <laughs> But I want it to be a very personal threat to Shepard. I think be, we face a galactic level, you know, uh, a threat with the Reapers. These Leviathan-esque beings that come that, that come to the Milky Way galaxy every 50,000 years and purge it and then return back in the dark space. It's like, let's tell a very personal story. I, I want the villain to be like a bastard. Just an absolute bastard where he's targeting Shepard personally on a personal level and all of his friends and, and love interests on a personal level. I think that'd be really cool. Just fucking with them. Because that, that would really motivate me. Just tell, like, again, you have a huge galaxy to explore, all these fun quests and everything and side quests and stuff, but let's get a villain who's just a, just a real son of a bitch. I would really like that. I really like that. What if Shepard is the villain of the new ass? I would cry! <laughs> Of sadness, but I'd be like, I still play it though. I'd be like, how, how are they gonna pitch this? Two games managed to make me cry. I know exactly. Uh, I, uh, Mass Effect, yeah, I got Mass Effect 3 made me cry. I cried, chat. I talked about that. that. Was a question from a little while ago with the moments in the Mass Effect series that made me cry. I talked about them, my favorite moments, but uh, yeah, that they're, they're doing what I've always wanted, chat. Telling a, a looks, looks to be, I mean, who knows what it's gonna end up being, but it looks like it's going to be the next chapter in the Mass Effect Shepard saga. And I am all about that. That's why I've always won. Captain Law, I came back from the bathroom and thought you were talking about Firefly. <laughs> Firefly always popped up. It was funny. I was reading like something about Firefly again. They're, they're restarting. It's like, no, they're not. <laughs> Josh, one might argue that it counts that because the trilogy is about to re-release. for new Exactly. And that's great because it makes sense now. They're re-releasing the original trilogy chat next year which I'm going to play, Legendary Edition, and it's, and it's getting people ready. It's making going to be making new fans of it, uh, of the trilogy, and preparing, uh, preparing people for the, sh the, the, sh the continuation of Shepard's story. And uh, I, I, I'm so excited about it. I cannot wait. While the Casey Hudson, the other guy left by Yeah, I forgot who the other guy was, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's sad, of course. You know, that was Hudson's baby, the Mass Effect trilogy. And, but I'm hoping for the best, guys. I'm hoping for the best. I want this to be good. I, never, I, ever, I, I always say this. I never want a video game to be bad. No one wants to play a bad video game. You know, I mean, maybe it's a for, good for a laugh, like Sonic 2006 or something, or Duke Nukem's like, ah, look how bad this is. But eventually, you're just like, I'm just miserable playing this. I always want to play good video games. I always want to, whatever series it might be. I just don't, I don't want to hate on a series just because it's it's that series, and I just don't like that series for whatever reason. No, I want old video games to be good, so I want to give this a shot. Platinum Wave, welcome to stream. Hope you're doing very well today. Good to see you. I'm still going on this new Mass Effect. Mm. See, now Bioware's now, I'm not acting excited before. I get you, Dark Slayer. Listen, I'm right there. Like, I've been very... Just, I, listen, I've been very honest about my opinions on Bioware and the, uh, what, it's, what it's produced in the year since. Hate Andromeda, hate Anthem. So I'm right there with you. Like, they are, they, they've made some bad games these last couple of years. And so they have a lot to prove. I think a good step forward is the Mass Effect uh, Legendary Edition. I'm looking forward to it, you know, uh, with that remaster. And then we'll, we'll go on from there and... Hopefully, hopefully it'll be good. Hopefully it'll be stable. <laughs> that's what I want. Far on, welcome. Never played Mass Effect, so I'll be picking up the risk. Excellent, man. No, that that's the, I think that's going to be the best way to play it. Because even I will say, Chad, like Mass Effect 1, I love that game. But it's dated now. By now, it's probably dated. It, it, the, the, the combat especially. The, they really improved it um, with 2 and uh, 3. Uh, those I think I love the combat in those two games. And uh, they, they, made, they added a lot more Gears of War. Gears of War was a very important game, chat during the 2000s. Like Resident Evil 4 and Gears of War, I'd say, for third-person shooters. And, it, you know, with Gears, it was very much the cover-based third-person shooters. Uh, and you, you saw a lot of Gears in the, baked in the DNA in Mass, in, in Mass Effect 2 and 3, which I'm fine with. I like that. I like that, that, that combat style. So where Mass Effect 1 was, not, didn't have that snappiness 
like a lot of third person shooters uh, have nowadays, the cover based third person shooters. And so I'm hoping that they'll work on that in for the uh, the re release. I want to see if they change the combat for it. I imagine so. Thank you, Ducks, for the five minutes going up on Mountain and the Make. I thought, oh, Jesus Christ, <laughs> the Mako. I'm very interested to see how they, 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 they work that up, uh, how they rework that, if at all. We'll see. Yeah, that's what almost had. Hold up, a great story. Uh, uh, great today, but the goddamn room. Oh yeah, the fucking Mako is stuff. But I love the story, Mass Effect One. I love the story. I love the characters. The soundtrack of Mass Effect One is the most different compared to the other two games. Mass Effect Two and Three are more orchestral, but Mass Effect One they use that synth constantly. It's it's very much a synth based score, and I love the film grain they had on it too. Like I don't think the other games had a film grain, but this one had like a really cool like seventies esque film grain. I always love I always loved that chat because it was it really was Bioware's. Uh, um, a version of a Star Trek esque universe. So, yeah, I was awesome. Come here, Hazel. Juice again, juice again, juice again. Come here, Hazel. Welcome to stream. About to get to your questions just now. Was this just uh, was this answering Ace Rock's question, Mass Effect question? Welcome to the stream. Uh, Farad, do you think they'll do a Halo Anniversary style remaster or a Mafia style uh, re remaster? Uh, I'm hoping I'm hoping for a Halo Anniversary style remaster one because I like the Halo Anniversary one that came out like what in 2011, I think. The 10th anniversary one you're talking about, I really like that one. That was great. I got I want to play some of the Halo games on stream someday. Chat. I'll start with that one too. I like that game. I'm actually a Halo fan. I mean, I fell off because I just, you know, five, I just didn't care for. We'll see about Infinite. We'll see what happens. <sighs> Ace Rock is funny. I have been watching Star Trek Discovery, and the reason why I really got into the show is because it has strong Mass Effect vibes. There you go. Yeah, man. No. Uh, Star Trek was, you could tell, Star Wars, Star Trek uh, were very influential on Mass Effect. Probably Star Trek more so. I mean, just the whole idea of a galactic federation of races coming together and trying to make peace of each other. That, that's, that's Star Trek to a T. And uh, yeah, I just Ma I just thought Mass Effect did such a great job of doing doing something like what Star Trek has been doing for all those years. They had a great wealth of uh, material already out there and to help craft their own uh, world. And yeah, that's why I love the universe. It just feels so alive. It feels so alive, and I just love the history in it and how the history has had an impact on the world itself and the characters and for good or for bad. And I, yeah, that's why I love it so much. It's just so goddamn good. Cannot wait to do that. What was wrong with Andromeda? Uh... Oh God! Where do I begin? Honestly, it was it was several things. One, the great the game just did not perform very well. It was ugly looking. I mean, the whole memes like my face is tired. Bad dialogue, boring story. I didn't care for a lot of the characters. Never bought in a rider as a big hero. Uh, I hated the fetch quests. There were so many fucking fetch quests, and it drove me it, it just drove me crazy. These big open worlds, and there was like really nothing to do with them. I'll say this. Uh, that's one thing I'll say. How Mr. Hummer, welcome to stream. Uh, uh, thank you for the 10 minutes. Happy 8th night of Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Welcome, Mr. Hummendinger. I'll say this. I am not that guy that's asking. I want big open worlds for Mass Effect. No. I am very much content with a Mass Effect 2 or like, like, you have these open areas, but I don't want them to be so big that, it, 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 that it, it, the story and the characters get lost. Like, I think what Mass Effect does the best is its characters and storytelling. Uh, I don't need a big giant open world. If you want to see have certain hubs worlds, like I thought with the, with the Citadel DLC was great. The Citadel DLC was great. Even some of the hub worlds in ME2, like Omega, that was great. And the Citadel in one, that's fine. Uh, some planet areas which are maybe a little bit larger, that's okay. Like, I, I don't need something that's really big. All right, I don't need to some, have something that Andromeda did because it just did not work. It did not work, and it was bored, and I hated it, and I didn't like fucking rolling around in the goddamn rover thing. They brought up the Mako back. It's like, why? Because there is there there is this segment of the Mass Effect fan base that loves the fucking Mako. I'm like, why do you love the Mako? Why? You love going up those goddamn mountains? I didn't love going up those mountains. <laughs> Thank you, Dark Slayer. I think 2 did it best with the level design. 2 had great level design. I also like threes. I also like threes. Uh, I, I love, especially the Citadel DLC and all that stuff. I mean, my whole thing is, you can have these arena-esque areas or the, these open areas. They don't have to be so big, but make sure you pack them with stuff to do or interactions to have. I'm totally fine with that. But, yeah, I mean, that's that's just my opinion. Uh, but thank you, Dark Slayer, for the five biddies. Yeah, and yeah, and just, yeah, Andromeda, I just didn't care. I hated the villains. Villains were so, these, these giant bony gorilla guys. And I was like, you're not, after the Reapers, like, you were not intimidating at all. They all look the same. They all have that blank fucking stare. Not intimidating whatsoever. Ugh. Hey, sir, Mass Effect 2 is the sweet spot for me. I don't want a GTA Red Dead kind of open world. Agreed. Not for Mass Effect. I agree. That's worked for some other games, but I don't think for Mass Effect. Agreed with you. I want to go to highly crafted and, uh, and, and curated environments that are carefully designed and purposeful. Exactly. 100% with you, man. With you with that. No question about it. No question about it. Oh, so. That was my answer. 
Alex Bernal Hamilton review. <laughs> someday. I'll put that on a movie poll someday. Welcome, Alex. I hope you're doing very well. And in case I missed anyone before, welcome to stream. I hope your Thursday evening is treating you well. Currently at, at, at answering patron questions. We'll go ahead and answer. Now we're on to Call Me Hazels. And again, chat, if you have any questions you want to ask me right now, we want to submit to uh, Patreon. If you are a Tier 5 subscriber up, please do so right now. I will answer them if I can. All right. This is, this is, um, this is Call Me Hazels' first question. What are my plans on incorporating Discord and Patreon. So I'm trying to put this together, chat. As you know, uh, I want to use Discord more. I want to create a more, uh, well, I want to create like an environment where people can just interact with each other, not just on Twitch chat, but on multiple platforms. I think a good way to do that is with Discord. And I, I freely admit I've been neglecting that because I've just been so busy with content creation. I don't want to neglect that. But the first step I need to do, and I, I should talk about this with all my mods, but I've been talking with Josh and he's put up uh, a, a category on my Discord chat called Project Lazarus chat. Ba funny enough, based on Mass Effect, the resurrection of Commander Shepard, the resurrection of the Discord itself. And I, what, I, what we want to do is get feedback from people for the, uh, for the Discord. How to make it better, how to improve it. Any suggestions, Shay? You have any suggestions, go ahead. But what, would, what do you want? What do you want? Feel free, be as open as you want. You know, like don't you know just just, just be, be as honest because that's why I need to, that's why I need to learn I need to learn what needs to be done how to make this better for everyone how to incorporate it w with Twitch and with YouTube and with Patreon like one of the things I'm definitely gonna do chat and I I gotta talk with Austin about this I know you sent me that 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 message man we got I know we have to have a day we got to pick where we all talk to each other but uh, one thing I definitely want to do chat is I want to have watch parties on discord chat where if you happen to be a subscriber on my Patreon for example for example like whatever level I haven't even decided the level yet but if you're like a subscriber on Patreon then that will allow you to access watch parties which I'll be a part of and we can all sync up on mic or or video or what have you we can discuss that and we'll watch a movie together you know and you guys can vote on that movie You people in the Patreon will be able to vote on what's the watch party movie for this week or maybe it'll be bi-weekly or something chat like these are some of the things that got to work out. Um, but that's the example. And then we go in the Discord and we watch it together, you know. And uh, I could possibly maybe record it, but again, I have to ask people. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of like uh, uh, nuts and bolts to this chat. I gotta like which one is fitting, which one works. Be I can put put everything together, you know. So that's like an example of what I want to do. But the first thing I need right now is I need feedback from you guys and just tell me like what do you desire? What do you think would be good? And we can test this stuff out. I can go through with my mods and we can just discuss all this. And I just want to create a better environment for everybody. And also on the Twitch side of things, I also want Discord not only to be used for my stream chat, but I want people to go to my Discord. It's like, hey, let's do an Among Us uh, play session. But I don't have to be there for it. Like, you guys can use that. That would be a place for you guys to go and coordinate and use it. Call of Duty, Left 4 Dead, Overwatch, whatever. Whatever multiplayer game there, there is, Shattered. S stuff like that I think would be really fun. And so the Discord is always alive and it's always active, even if I might not be there on that, 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 at that time or something. Uh, but then I would also use it on my streams. I also want to establish a set of rules and uh, uh, just kind of... I'm trying to think, think, think of the right word, but just rules and regulations on like treatment of other people in the discord. Cause I, I don't want to like create an environment where people are going at each other or something. Um, they're being nasty towards each other. Like I wanted to be very, uh, accommodating and very kind and, uh, like people aren't talking over each other. Like that's something I want to institute. Uh, it's, it's hard to do that. Cause you just, you have a lot of personalities. And, but I I'm, I'm, I'm definitely want to work on something like that as well and kind of have that in place so, so people know the rules and regulations and things. So we can all be, uh, you know, all be cool. Exactly, yeah. You just you know, all be yeah, considerations. Thank you, Austin. C considerations. Um, that, that's what house rules. Yeah, another, great, another great word for it. You know, another great saying for it. Yes, yeah, so stuff like that. Like that's something I want to do. And that's just overall. Not necessarily connected to Patreon or anything. But the, the, I just want to make Discord a bigger part of it. Of all different things, mostly Twitch and mostly uh, 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 Patreon, YouTube. But YouTube is just, it's, it's, you, you, I have to, YouTube is kind of like, that's my, that's my repository of stuff that I've already had and it's available to you guys or reactions or maybe more recent things. But definitely want to make Discord a big part of it. But I need your feedback. So if to, to kind of wrap it all up, if you can go to Discord chat, if you joined it, go to Project Lazarus, please. 
uh, uh, submit anything you want, anything that's on your mind, things that you want to see, things that you think might be good, or things you think need changing, go ahead, be as open or free. And also, you want to contact me via social media in case you want to discuss something maybe uh, more privately, please do so. I want you to do that, chat. So, yeah, hope, hope, hope that helps. You know, Phil Noob, 8-Bit Crumbs is today. We're doing 8-Bit Crumbs. It's going to be later in the evening. Uh, uh, we, we, we got a screener for Monster Hunter, and so it's delayed probably till around 10. Yeah, Milky Mac, welcome to the stream. Love that name, Milky Mac. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So hopefully you guys understand where I'm coming from with, with Discord. So hopefully that answers your questions uh, too, calling me Hazel. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Very nice. Very nice. But uh, now we can move on to Color Me Hazel's next question, chat. Will you ever consider vlogging your pre-stream process and uh, uploading it? Uh, sure. I never really uh, thought about doing that. But one thing I, I, I have to do, and it's kind of related to that, is I got up because people have been asking me this question. I've been seeing a lot more recently. Uh, people have been asking me, like, how I got into streaming. What do I need to do to get into streaming? Uh, what technology do I use? Even if there's more technology I want to improve or just even some software stuff I want to make a little bit better. Uh, make, I want to make 1080p an option uh, for people who want to stream me in 1080p. You can. Uh, but I want to, yeah, I, I would definitely do like a little video. Like this is how, this is my pre-stream setup. This is what I had to do to uh, change certain things around. Make from console to console or platform to platform. That's a great idea. I would definitely make that available. But I want to make certain things I already have available in place for people I can, I can point them to if they ask what technology I use. Go right here to my Twitch channel or my YouTube. This is the equipment I use. This is what this is what's worked for me before. These are some of the problems that I've encountered. Like that's something that I, that I definitely have in mind. It's a very good thing to do because I know a lot of streamers actually absolutely have that available for people to look at and go, oh, they use this. I want to use that. So, no, that's, that's a great suggestion. Sage Snake, welcome to stream. Hope you're doing well today. Good to see you. See the juice in fresh HD. Absolutely. No question. But look at Ari, Chris, we want the uh, Dragon Resident Evil 7, the hunt of the monster. Ha <laughs> ha, don't worry, you'll get to that. We'll get to that tonight. Not on this. I sadly can't talk about the movie here, but I will talk about it on 8-Bit Crumbs tonight. Yeah, probably starting around 10. I'm not sure. Corey said he'd message me to let me know when we'd be doing it. So uh, I don't know. It, it hasn't been posted to the site what, when 8-Bit Crumbs is tonight. Because you guys might know before I do. Let's see. I'm curious. Uh, 9.15. All right, 9.15. So it's a 9.15 chat. Now, now I, so you guys probably knew before I did. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we'll do it. I'll confirm with Corey to, uh, uh, after as well, just to make sure. Um, <clears throat> but uh, good, good, uh, Have a good evening, Ryan. Emerald Jester, welcome to stream. Yep, thank you, 9.15 to confirm it. Appreciate that. But yeah, hopefully that answers your question, Colin Hazel. Uh, here's another question from Carmi Hazel Chat. You've mentioned that you were having difficulties on YouTube, maybe uploading just highlights of your reviews, consisting of maybe 30 minutes per video instead of the whole review. They then mentioned that they can get the whole unedited version on Twitch. Just a suggestion because whenever, whenever it comes to YouTube, I have a, uh, such a short attention that attention span that if a video just rambled on for too long, I tend to click onto another video. No, you're absolutely right. Like a lot of my content is very long. And typically, the rule is the shorter the better on YouTube. Uh, in most cases, in most cases. In other cases, people can watch an hour video or a half hour video and be fine. Um, the thing is, though, with, with Twitch, the fact that I am an affiliate, like, those videos don't stay up there forever. They eventually will be uh, uh, taken off. Like, they won't, like, my backlog on Twitch, that's why I'm constantly exporting stuff, because it'll eventually be removed. They, everything has a time limit because, based on my level, so I'm not able to keep them. So I basically have a stream archive where I'm, I'm slowly editing these versions, taking out some stuff and putting them on YouTube chats. It's, I have such a, a substantial backlog now, it's just hard. So I would love to do something like that. That'd be great, but, you know, I, I, I just can't. I just can't, and uh, I kind of, I mean, the YouTube, I mean, it's, it's already free, like, the Twitch content's already free for people, so I don't want to deny them the whole thing, because it's already out there anyway, so that's why I put, usually put up the whole review for the movie, or the cartoon, or the gameplay section, or, or what have you, so, uh, yeah, I would love to do it the other way, but I, I just, I just can't, just because I know that stuff's eventually going to be taken down, and I'm always be, I'm always very, very careful. Uh, we got to save the wraps. Don't worry. I've been saving the wraps. I've been saving the wraps. No question. Don't worry. It's all exported. Wraps have been saved. Wraps have been saved. I got girl, uh, my girlfriend Gremlins 2 for Xmas. Okay, gift. Uh, does she like Gremlins 2? Is she a fan of Gremlins 2? If that's the case, then sure. Absolutely. Yeah. But that's what I've been using. I won't be able to see the rescue is because I'm working right now. See you later. Juicy again, juicy again, juicy again. No problem, Carmen Hazel. Have a great working day. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, I hope that answers your question. Hope that answers your question. Uh, here's another question she had. There's got two more for coming, Hazel. I'll see if you guys submit any more. 
Uh, what kind of texter are you? I'm the type of texter that will read the text but reply in my head then realize, ha I hadn't actually texted back hours, days, maybe even a week later and then actually replied to him and said, well, Josh and Austin cannot answer this one for me. I am the kind of texter that does not text back. <laughs> I'm like, or is unaware that the message was sent to me. I'm like, oh shit, they sent me a message. I gotta, I gotta eventually get back to them. I'm that kind of texter chat. I, uh, I am not as responsive as I should be or want to be. But again, because of my schedule and the and the content that I that I just I'm working on. Thank you, Dark Souls, my biddies. Woo! I'm Mr. Sun. Uh, just suggestion, separate channels for reviews and gameplay. That's a good suggestion, Dark Slayer, uh, for the YouTube channel. Yeah, because I just upload so much content. I might do that. Can I? I have a question. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put a pin in the one with Carmen Hazel just asked me right now. But I mean, kind of, no, to answer it quickly, to answer it very succinctly, I'm the kind of guy that's like, they sent me a text. I'll respond back when I, when I can. You know, uh, but it might be hours, days, a week. <laughs> but I will eventually do it. I will eventually do it. Just get busy. I just get busy. Alex Mello, is there a new Patreon level? Uh, yes, there is. So, actually, two new levels. I have the $1 level, which is just general support. If you're able to submit $1 a month, I upload a free uh, movie commentary or video reaction and a free uh, cartoon commentary or video reaction to YouTube every Monday. And so, it's just uh, $1. I mean, you're going to get them no matter what, but in case you, don't, in case you can't support the higher level, $1 a month. You know, so $0.10 cents a month. Um, and the other level I created is the $25 tier level. That's the ultimate level. It's you're a juicy gangsta. And that level, you get to pick one movie and one episode of a cartoon show for me to watch every single month. And I will, sub I will have that commentary and full video reaction for both available. I'll post them on the thing. But you get, you get the ability to, to, uh, to pick one. That's one of the new tiers I created. So I have a total of six tiers right now, chat. All various levels and benefits and things. Uh, yeah, I also have the bonus commentaries, as I said, and those will always be available at the $2 level and up. So, uh, But, did you listen to Thunder Lee's uh, music suggestion? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I will do see, I will do it someday, though. <laughs> I'll do it someday. Witness! Oh, Jesus. God, witness me. <laughs> One day. Go versus Fish. Thank you for the right chap. Please check out Go vs. Fish. Are you a goat or are you a fish? I am a goat. I am a goat, chat. Please give Goat vs. Fish a follow or subscription if possible, chat. He deserves it. He's a very funny guy. He's a talented musician. I love it when he serenades me with the songs, chat. I am a goat. That's what we're all about on here. How you doing, man? I hope you had a very good stream. Thank you for sharing your audience with me. For those of you who might not know me, my name is Mr. Evan 7. I also go by Chris. I'm a variety streamer. I do movie reviews. I do cartoon reviews. I do watch parties. I play single-player games. I play multiplayer games. Uh, I also do a Q&A show every Thursday, which I'm doing right now. Class in a glass cast for you to ask a little bit of sass, where I answer my patrons' Patreon questions. Currently in the middle of that right now. Yes, I'm, I'm all about the goat. Chad, I'm indeed a goat. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to stream, my friend. Hope you're doing very well. Uh, but, uh, what was, what was my, I forgot, I, I got so off topic, I went from question to question to question. Uh, but, oh, yeah, now I remember. Creating a separate YouTube channel for the, uh, gameplay and the, uh, movie reviews is probably a very good idea, because I have such a, I have such a, I have a large, large amount of videos now that I'm going to upload. And maybe the, dudes, is there, a, I can't probably do it, though, like, to upload... Like, can I, like, can I choose, is there, I had to look this up, but I gotta see if there's an ability, an option, where I can move videos from my YouTube to another channel. I don't know if that something like that is, is available. I have to look it up. We'll see. We'll see. But that'd be, that'd be very convenient. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, that's actually a, a great, a great, uh, piece of, um, that's a great, that's a great suggestion, I should say. Yeah. And, uh. Uh, but yeah, for the texture chat, uh, te the texting uh, question, I'm very much an absentee-minded uh, texter. You know, um, yeah, I, I try my best, but you know, I'm just so busy sometimes I forget to, to text back, or I will text back. It takes time with me, so pretty, pretty. That's that's pretty much how I am. Now this is uh, Color Me Hazel's next question. Lucky Dog Podcast, welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing very well. Good to see you. Got Lucky Dog Podcast right here, chat. 
Uh, and this is Clem Hazel's final question. Who was your biggest cartoon crush? Don't say you didn't have one. You all had one. Well, of course we did. Uh, we all had one. Anyone who says they didn't have one is sus. Every, every, you're, a, you're a goddamn liar if you didn't have a cartoon crush, chat. I'm saying that right now. Everyone has had everyone has had a cartoon crush or multiple cartoon crushes. Now, Brandon, do you see the dad that goes out for a pack of smokes and comes back every 20 years? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Except with, that's with texting, though. It's with texting. <laughs> Maybe even create a playlist of your videos. I do have a, I do have a playlist. I do have like a various playlists for all my videos. That that I absolutely do. Oh oh, you mean oh? I see what you're saying. Like create a a a, a playlist of my old channel. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. That's a good idea. So like if I do my if I do for example, so I have my regular class and glass channel, but then I do my gameplay channel, right? And I create like a playlist of all my old. Th things connected to that channel. Is that, you, is that what you're saying? I can see that. That's a good idea. Definitely. Thank you, Dark Slayer, for the five minutes. Five days later. Chris, hey, uh, you still want to hang out Friday? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it happens to me. But to, um, let me see here. Let me let me think about this. Uh, what is, oh, God, there's so many. I mean, Jessica Rabbit's a big one, Chad. As you know, I like curves. I like the thickness. So Jessica Rabbit's always been, been a really big one with me, chat. I'm trying to think what else. You know what? Elisa Maza, chat. Yes, I've seen Gargoyles recently. But I'm like, if I was a little kid, chat, Elisa Maza would definitely be like, yeah, that, that'd be one. Elisa Maza, no question, chat. Definitely Elisa Maza. Uh, uh, Jessica Rabbit. I'm trying to think. See, I'm... That, Jessica Rabbit's always a go-to, I think, for a lot of people. But there must, have, there must have been some other ones. But, yeah, those are two off the top of my head, chat. I can definitively say... Yeah, and the thing that I like, I mean, you know, obviously, uh, Jessica Rabbit, she's supposed to, she's a parody version, if you will, an homage, I think, to all those very curvaceous ladies we saw in those classic Warner Brothers cartoons, like with the wolf and going, whoo, whoo, just fucking screaming his head off when he sees, like, a, you know, a girl walking by, she with a big ass and big boobs and all that shit. Like, that's what she's an homage to. And all these other characters who are very curvaceous, very voluptuous. Uh, and Lisa, like, watching Gargoyle, she, I realized, like, she is, what I love about Lisa and is how she's sexy. She knows she's sexy, uh, but she's also has like a really, she's very confident and she's got a great personality too. Like that's, that's a big thing with me, Chad. I mean, you can't, yeah, beauty, yes. Beauty, of course, is, is, is always big. Sexual attraction, Chad, that's always a natural thing. We all, we all have it, you know. No, no, but that's how you, that's how it starts is a sexual attraction. It's just like, hey, that girl, that girl, that guy, whoever looks great. And then you learn more about them. But it has to be more than that with me. And what I like about Lisa is that she's really confident in herself. Uh, uh, she's flawed, which I like too. And uh, she's a badass. And, and on top of it, she's beautiful. And she's intelligent. And so she's the whole package. And that's why, and I love about that. I love that that comes across through like in every episode, she inter interactions with all the other characters. And there's one episode when she's like undercover. And uh, I remember it was at a museum. And she's like uh, by a mirror. And she's just going... Like, showing off, and she's, like, you know, putting her ass out and uh, putting her chest out. I remember, I was like, what the hell's going on here? I was like, this is a cartoon. But that one, uh, that always, that always uh, struck me when I when I saw that not that long ago. I was like, damn. So, Lisa Maza is is definitely one of those, along with Jessica Rabbit. I'm trying to think of some other ones. DC always had some great ones, chat. Uh, God. Like, from, the, like, the Bruce Tim, Like, Bruce Tim, the same thing. Bruce Tim and all those people are the same way. They, they, they like their very curvy women. That's that was big on uh, b big for them, so I think like Barbara Gordon from Batman the Animated Series, like the last the the last season chat. Always really like Barbara. I think they did uh, really well with her, and she like like much like Lisa Maza's chat. She was sexy. She was uh, 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 talented, intelligent, great personality, kicked ass. Like that, definitely Barbara. I'll put up there. Um, what else? Let's see. Is there any other thing? Uh, Trying to think of some other examples. There must be some other ones. What about you guys? I, like, there must be some other ones. Peggy Hill? <laughs> I'm not. Nah, man. I hated her personality. Well, I know I like her as a character. It's great because she's so funny, but she's very toxic at the same time. So I don't know about Peggy Hill. Poison Ivy. Poison Ivy. You know what? I really honestly, child, I'll be I'll be honest. Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn. I was like, yeah, character sexy as hell. Yeah, hell yeah, she's great. Yeah, the, and the, the, that's a that's a cartoon crush, if you will. Uh, the new Poison Ivy and the Harley Quinn series. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me, let me do, I'm not, I'm not going to get in trouble for this. Sexy female <laughs> cartoon characters. <laughs> Type in this in the Google channel. See what comes up. Uh, what do we have here, chat? Uh, oh, oh, you know, there's some great ones here. I have some other ones, chat. I have some other ones. Thank you, uh, Dark Side with Five Biddies. Uh, Melanie 10 from, uh, from Batman Beyond. Another good one. Yeah, see, I've been watching Batman Beyond. I'll, I'll get to that. Yeah, Melanie. Very good. Yeah, good selection. Um... Uh, 
Uh, oh, God. Esmeralda from... I, even though I'm not a big fan of the movie. Esmeralda. Uh, beautiful. In, um, in Hunchback from Notre Dame. Jasmine from Aladdin chat. Love, love Jasmine. <sighs> I'll try to get some other ones here. Um, hmm. Hmm. I'm trying to think what else. See, people say like Marge Simpson all the time, Marge Simpson, but I'm like, I never really was like, oh, I'm sexually attracted to Marge Simpson. Now I'm just looking on like the top 25 list. Let's see if we got anything here. They have Poison Ivy from Batman the Animated Series. Yep, from the whole thing. Sure. What was Griffin? <laughs> uh, trying to think what else. Hmm, chat. I know for a lot of people, Katara is a big one. I know for a lot of people, Katara is... That, that point, I was a little bit older already, and she's like 14, so I was like, eh. <laughs> but I know for a lot of people, Katara was a big one for them growing up when they were like little kids and they saw uh, Avatar The Last Airbender. Like, that was a big one for people. So those are a couple off the top of my head, chat. Felicia Hardy misses Incredible, still is to this day. <laughs> Miss Incredible is another great, another great pick. she Raven. Yeah, Raven. They even do, they even sexualized her and the T-Titans go. Them legs! <laughs> I remember that episode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you do your best uh, Marge Simpson impression? Oh my God, I need practice that. I don't, I don't feel, uh, <clears throat> Homer. Oh, actually, I can't do it. Homer. It's just, it's just me going, <clears throat> <laughs> Oh, Lord. Uh, Chicago Superman, thank you for the host and welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing very well. We're talking about the sexiest uh, 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 cartoon characters. Well, our cartoon crushes back in the day. So, yeah, I'm going to ruin my throat if I do that voice. It's very true. I'm a juicy gangster. Alex Bernal, thank you. Thank you for becoming a juicy gangster. Appreciate that. That's so kind of you. Thank you. Now, everyone who's subscribed to Patreon, again, thank you so much. Really do appreciate it. Thank you for subscribing at the highest tier. If you done, if you have done that, thank you so much. That's so, so kind. Um, but yeah, I'll top my head chat, uh, Jessica Rabbit, Elisa Maza, uh, Babs, you know, Barbara Gordon from Batman the Animated Series, especially the, la the last season. Uh, uh, th those were always, the, those are the ones, you know, that, that really uh, appealed to me. Re really liked them a lot, chat. Yeah, really good impression. Thank you, Sage. I'm trying, I'm trying. I'll, I'll try, I'll work on that one. I'll work on that one, chat. We got some breaking news. What's the breaking news? What's going on? Sorry, I was distracted by talking about the sexy cartoon characters chat. How people said Jessica Rabbit? Everybody. Everybody. Sam and Danny Phantom. I could see that. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of goth kids especially. Uh, Chris, how do you feel about Barb, Bane, Batman, the killing joke? Oh, it did, that was weird. <laughs> it was very weird. I mean, not that Barbara Gordon and Batman haven't had, you know, relationships like that, but it was just weird for the movie. It was unnecessary. That should have been a 30-minute short. It did not need another hour to it. Supercut got removed from the PS4 store. Ah, well, I mean, it makes sense. You know, the game is ex extremely rough on the PS4 and the Xbox uh, One. Not surprised by that. Took that down. Yeah, yeah. Probably because everyone's getting their money back from that. Chris, check your Twitter. Sony room. So, yep, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, thank, thank you for sending my, that me my way. I'm not surprised by that. We'll talk about that tonight, chat, on 8-Bit Crumbs. Yeah. Yeah, crazy. And Hughes from the Iron Giant. Oh, yeah, 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 the mother, the mother, yeah, she's cute, yeah, yeah, I'll put that up there. My friend is playing the PS4 version, the motorcycle spawned in their car. <laughs> oh, don't worry, shit, I found some compilations of bugs and glitches we'll watch tonight on 8-Bit Crumbs uh, from uh, uh, Cyberpunk 2077, be good, it'll be fun. Uh, Ashi, What's, I've heard, I'm, I'm not familiar with Ashi. That sounds familiar, but I don't know what, what, what show that's from. Hmm. But yeah, actually, that's like a couple of mine that, uh, that I'm thinking off the top of my head in terms of the hottest uh, cartoon characters. And you guys have your own, your own as well. Very good, very good. I like it, Chad. Good, good list. Good list, chat. Mm-hmm. Very nice, very nice. Yeah. Corbin, hey, Chris, I was wondering if you got to see the monitor. I, was, I still have not been able to look at that, Corbin. I'll check that out, though, uh, probably sometime tomorrow. It's just, it was very busy. I had to watch the, that movie. I had to prepare the, the show uh, tonight. Some other upcoming commentaries I'm working on. But I'll get to that, man. I will. Oh, Aku's daughter. Oh, 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 oh. I was like, that sounds so familiar. It's like, oh, yeah, fair enough. I can see that. And she was naked the entire time, chat. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. She's just wearing her father's, I don't know, loogies? I don't know what the hell she was wearing. It was It was odd. It was odd. But, uh, yeah, no good selection chat. Now, what we can do here, guys, is give me a moment. 
Uh, let me see if we got received any other questions from people. Because that was the last question, Chad. That was the last question. If not, then I can uh, take some questions from you guys uh, right now. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, it looks like, uh, let me see, let me see. Yeah, it looks like I can take some questions from you guys. So, any questions? Any questions at the moment, chat, that you would like me to answer after that? Again, Color Me Hazel thing. I think, I believe, I believe that was Color Me Hazel's last question. Let me make sure. It was. It was. Thank you, Color Me Hazel, for submitting those questions. As I said, guys, uh, if you are a tier five subscriber, that is $15 and up. You have the ability to submit questions from my class in the glass cast for you. Ask a little bit of sass. Every Thursday, every uh, Thursday, question. Yeah, why are you so sus? I can't help it. I can't help it. <laughs> I'm just saying this in a little white sus boy chat. It naturally comes to me. Yeah, well, apparently for the PS4, I was taken out the store for the PS4. The furry girl from Animaniacs is hot too. Dot? <laughs> I missed the nurse, chat. I missed the nurse from Animaniacs. That sucks that they took her off. Ah, I don't like that. They should bring her back, chat. So will CD, uh, CD Project Red bounce back from this disaster? Probably. Yeah, they'll do it. Um, I think so. I mean, they still have a, a pretty goddamn good pedigree in terms of the Witcher games that they made over the last few years. They'll bounce back. You know, they just got to regain the trust. I think it's possible for them. I think it's possible for them. Very much so. Because maybe his favorite chocolate bar? Favorite chocolate bar. Oh, very good question. Reese's. If you, if you want to count that. I mean, I guess that's, I don't know. I guess it's kind of chocolate bar. Yeah, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Mm -hmm. We covered uh, Cartoon Crush. Do you have any video game crushers? Y yes. Tali Zora. Tali Zora, that's a big crush right there. Um, some other Tess from the Witcher series. really like Tess. Tess Marigold. That's a big one. Um, hmm. do, 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 do. Trying to think of some other ones, chat. Those are the ones that are merely coming uh, to... Oh! Uh, oh, God. I forgot the character's name. But it was a game called uh, uh, Odyssey... No, Enslaved Odyssey to the West, chap. It was very good. It, I, th there's a character in there who is kind of like your partner but growing to be a love interest. I don't remember the character's name, but I, I had a crush on her. She was super cute. She was a cutie patootie. I'm, oh, I'm racking my brain. What was her name? Hold on, Jack. Give me a second. I gotta look this up. Enslaved Oz, super underrated title, Chad, created by Ninja Theory. Um, I will definitely play this on stream. It was so good. Trip, Trip, Trip was the character's name, Chad. She was like the partner to uh, Andy Serkis' monkey, who was very, very funny. Um, and just, it was just great, great. Trip definitely is, is up there, yeah. Missy Randoms, it has been a while. Welcome back to the stream. Hope you're doing very well. Good to see you. It's been a, it's been a hot minute. How you doing? How's your Thursday evening? Just taking some questions right now. Josh Nelly. I'm going to say Tolly. Yep, you nailed it. <laughs> yep, yep. Called it. Called it. Reese's is in chocolate bar. Okay, well, <laughs> fair enough. Um, I'll go with uh, Hershey with almonds then. I'll go with that one. Ace Rock, uh, Hershey bar of almonds. Uh, people forget that Witcher 3 was uh, pretty busted when it came out. I really am steamed that CD Projekt Red is spoiling them. Of course, I think they are motivated to get back. No, I think so. I think they did lie about the PS4 and the Xbox One version of the game. That's clear uh, what we're learning from now. So, yeah, they got, to, they got to redeem themselves. But, you know, I'm only giving them the benefit of the doubt. Sure. Let's put out a product that works. People, people always come back to you. If you listen, it, what it always comes down to is like, what have you done for me lately? And if you make a good game and you make another good game after that, then they'll be like, okay, we always forgive. That's what always happens. It always happens. Gamers, they, 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 they're a fickle bunch. <laughs> they're a fickle bunch. Yeah. So okay. So some people agree with me Reese's. Well, if not, if, if not Reese's, then I'll do a uh, Hershey chocolate bar of almonds. I like my my chocolates nutty. Very much so. Oh, Jill Valentine. Oh, yeah, Jill Valentine. Definitely. She's a cute Even more, most recently in the Resident Evil 3, she looked hot as hell. She was super cute. Super cute. Und Diamond Game, Underrated Game. Super underrated. I got to play that on stream, Chad. If you guys have not played Enslave Odyssey of the West, please do it. It's it's a just a really good action adventure game, Chad. Wonderful world. Beautiful score. Well voice acted. <sighs> It was, it, it was one of the last truly great mid-tier uh, level games, Chad, from the Xbox 360 and PS3 generation. So goddamn good. Come on. Hey, Chris, what do you consider somebody crushes for you? I Oh, I've mentioned this before. Uh, I mean, Scarlett Johansson was one. Uh, uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Uh, Christina Hendricks. Um, 
Those are a couple off the top of my head I really like. Thank you, Patch of the Ten Minis! I'll read your comment in just a second. Like, those are like probably my top three. I'm like, I really like these these these, these three people. There's there's others, I imagine. Those always always immediately uh, come to mind with with me. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have here, chat? Um, it's your end. I'm stressed. Huh? It's just after 1 a.m. I can't say. Oh, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry that you're, you're a little stressed out right now. Uh, I am doing uh, doing very well. Streams have been going great. Content creation has been going great. I'm now a full-time streamer. This is my day job now. This is my day job, and I love it. I'm technically my night job. <laughs> you guys, that's why I typically stream. But, no, I'm, I'm doing very well. Just busy. Just always, just always busy. Happy to have you back here, Missy Randoms. Welcome, welcome, welcome. No, I'm currently just a uh, answering uh, questions uh, from my patrons or my Patreon. Oh, now, but now I've ran out of questions, so we're just uh, taking questions from the chat right now. Going over all sorts of stuff. So you can tell me, we're asking what my, my video game crushes and celeb crushes and all. Oh, we got all the nitty-gritty details on here. Very honest, very honest on this channel. Uh, what else do we have here, chat? Mm, 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 mm. Uh, what we got? Uh, what would you do for a Klondike bar? Murder. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite author, Summer Baby? Oh, wow. That's a great question. Oh, man. Hmm. So many people. I mean, my favorite book of all time is probably The Hobbit. So J.R.R. Tolkien. But even though I'm not a big fan of his, his Lord of the Ring trilogy, though. I, I prefer the mil movies. But where I hate the Hobbit uh, uh, trilogy, but I love the Lord of the Ring trilogy. But I, but I love the Hobbit book, but I'm not a big fan of the Lord of the Rings book. It's weird. I'm a weird Lord of the Rings fan, but I mean, I, I got to put Tolkien in there just because he, he wrote my favorite book of all time. I absolutely love the Hobbit. I read, I, even though I don't read as much as I, I want to nowadays, I always have time to read the Hobbit at least once a year because it's, it's just so good. She just relaxes you, you know, even though you're familiar with the story. It's just, it's just so well written. It just really immerses you in that world. It moves at a very good clip check, extremely well paced. It's a great story. Uh, I love the Bilbo character. He's my favorite, other than probably... Uh, Gandalf and Schmeagol. He's he's Bilbo is probably my favorite character. Loved him, love him, love him, chat, love him. Uh, I'm a big fan of Isaac Asimov. You know the Foundation uh, books, chat. Uh, I mean uh, stuff like uh, 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 I Robot, fantastic uh, sci-fi author, chat. Really big fan of Isaac Asimov. Um, you know I, I I was a huge Stephen King uh, fan back in the day, chat. Read so many of his books. Um, I had a huge collection. Always, always a big fan. You haven't read a lot of his recent stuff in recent years. You just get busy, chat. But yeah, huge Stephen King fan back in the day. <sighs> I'm trying to think of some others, like, I mean, including like comic book writers. I mean, authors. They, they are authors as well. Ed Brubaker was always up there for me, chat. Loved his stuff, like on uh, Daredevil. Loved his Daredevil run. Does a lot of great cr crime noir stories. Definitely uh, Ed Brubaker, my, Brian Michael Bendis, chat for Daredevil and Ultimate Spider Man and Craig Miles Morales. Uh, uh, always really had a huge appreciation for him. Uh, Frank Miller, when he wasn't fucking crazy and racist <laughs> and, and, out, and it was an alcoholic back in the day, was a big Frank Miller fan at one point. Stuff like Daredevil and Dark Knight Returns and stuff. Um, trying to think who else. Brian, Brian K. Vaughn, chap. Brian K. Vaughn, stuff like uh, anything from Why the Last Man to Saga. Uh, extremely talented chat. Uh, loved his stuff. Uh, those are a couple off the top of my head in terms of like comic book writers and authors. Dan Stevens is one of my celebrity crushes, no question. No question, chat. Mm, what else we have? You guys still arguing about <laughs> Chris hates leaves. I do hate leaves. How can you spend one and a half pages talking about a goddamn tree, Tolkien? Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Should have been one movie. I agree with you. Should have been one movie. Mm-hmm. Deadpool, Chris Revere's Jeff Kinney for you. For authors, my favorites are Jules Verne, Tom Clancy, and Matt Colville. They read the Hobbit. Read the Hobbit. It's wonderful. Uh, Purple Canary. Wonderful. Foundation. Yep. 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 H.G. Wells. Yeah. H.G. Wells. So, <laughs> prolific author. No question. Orson Scott Card for Ender's Game. I read that. Read that. Saw the movie too. Okay. Oh yeah. Baby Captain America is brilliant. Oh my God. Yes. No. Uh, Love his that 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 that's what made me fall in love with Captain America. Chat was Ed Brubaker. Definitely, definitely, you know, he, absolutely brilliant. No, no, no question, Dark Slayer. No question. Thank you, Betcha, for the five biddies. Uh, Don Trumbo's Johnny got his guns high in the list for me. Oh, for you, Josh. Nice. Mm. Tell me if you love Tolkien. 
No, I get it. I love, I love uh, uh, The Hobbit. I mean, I like, I, I, I have a huge appreciation for what he created the world. It's just like Lord of the Rings books. They, they just, they're very, they don't, they're not, for me, they're not paced all that well, but, lot, but he deserves all the credit and accolades for what he created. No, no doubt about you. I'm not hating Tolkien, believe me. He wrote my favorite book of all time, so I'm not hating him. Uh, C.S. Lewis, Milky Mac, of course, Narnia, I'm sure. I was a huge Orson Scarf fan until I found out what he was fat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Michael J. Str- uh, 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 Straczynski. Mm-hmm. Uh, Roll uh, Ro- uh, Dahl. Yep, yep. Michael Fassbender and Mila Joyovich for you. Bat Shields. Uh, Austin, Ursula Le Guin. I've never heard of her. She did the Earthsea. Ah, very nice. Huge Hey, Chris, I got a question. My brother, since the MCU is introducing all these movies and all the others, uh, what approach do you expect or want the MCU to go as far as like movies and for other characters? Well, as I've always said... Um, what Marvel should do, and they seem to be leaning into it, Chad, is getting weird. They're getting weird, Chad. We, we saw the early signs of this, even with some of the Guardians of the Galaxy, which now we look, oh, Guardians of the Galaxy is mainstream. Back in 2014, Chad, or the year before that, 2013, Guardians of the Galaxy was not mainstream. I was questioning, like, how are you going to make this work? A fucking talking tree, a talking raccoon, and it's like, I don't, the chubby guy from Parks and Recreation. It's like, what, 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 really? And they did it. And they did it, Chad. Gardens Galaxy, I know we look at it now. It's just like, oh, it's just, you know, sci-fi, space opera comedy. But people, including myself, are like, I don't know about this. And we saw the movie and we all ate crow because it was it was great. It was so much fun. Chad. I love the first Gardens of the Galaxy movie. Um, and uh, they're leaning into that weirdness. And that's what Marvel should be doing. We're lean into that weirdness. And they shouldn't be doing that, Chad. All the multiverse stuff. And that they seem to be gearing up towards chat with, you know, WandaVision and Loki and Doctor Strange and looks like for Spider-Man as well. We'll see how that turns out. But uh, that that's what you that's what you know, for the other ones at least, that's what they should be doing, Chad. To get weird. I want to see characters that we never thought we'd see again. I want to see Moon Knight. I want to see, you know, uh, I want to explore the cosmos and these different dimensions and stuff, Chad. Let's get let's get to the, the, the Eternals. I know nothing about the Eternals. I'm I'm really interested in that. It's like, okay, is that gonna be your next guardians where we don't know anything about these people? I don't know anything about them. I don't know, I never heard of the Eternals. Maybe maybe like in a uh, referenced in a comic book or something, but never seen them, never really understood what they were. And now we're getting that. So lean into that weirdness. I love exploring all that shit. Do it. They're like, I, like they've established their universe so well, chat. They've gone back, and for the most part, they've done very a, a very good job. You know, they, they've stumbled, of course, and we've gone over those stumbles before. And they they go ahead and they look look at what something that's not working. Like for example, Thor. Like you know, Thor was kind of like get, yeah, but then Ragnarok, and then boom, he's now the most pop one of the most popular characters in the MCU. People, I cannot wait for Thor: Love and Thunder, chat, and because Ragnarok was so goddamn good, so. Yeah, they can they can even go back and rec- make stuff that wasn't really working work again. So I I, I yeah, I'm all for it. I want Squirrel Girl Maybe yeah, let's do it. Why not? Uh, Austin, I think the stuff that was best on no one remember when no one knew who Iron Man was. Exactly, man. People don't know who Iron Man was, chat. Iron Man was a B level hero back in the day. Now he's like the biggest of the big. He's like in the top three like, well, in terms of like with the pop culture zeitgeist chat. You know, people always talking about fucking Iron Man all the time. But I remember in the days, people didn't know what the fuck Iron Man was. They're like, Iron Man? What? Then people are like, y'all, you gotta do Spider Man or Wolverine. And, and, it, and it totally switched chat. And it's only 12 years ago. It's not that long ago, chat. Two years ago, Iron Man was kind of like, like, oh yeah, that guy, whatever. It's crazy how things have changed, Chad. Especially as a comic book fan who read these characters and realized, like, oh, yeah, these, this guy's never going to take off. And now he's the biggest thing ever. It's fucking nuts. Absolutely fucking nuts. Oh, thank you, Batch of the Five Bitties. Eternals will be a two-hour exposition for the future cosmic side of the MC. Also helped to introduce my, uh, why mutants exist. Uh, Mark Moritz. That'd be cool, man. Yeah. It, 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 there's, there's so much content to be mined in the, in the Marvel. That's why people are saying... I never understood this mindset. People were saying like, "Ah, oh, well, Marvel's just done." I'm like, "Why?" Because you know, Endgame, and it's never gonna, it's never gonna, you know, not. What else can they do after that? It's like there's so much they can do. There's an infinite amount of stuff they can do, Chad. Now it's expansive. Now, now it's just cool that we're at this spot where we have heroes retiring, uh, and now it's like now we're on the the new generation. I love that. That's ripe for exploration, Chad. Like. This canon that, you know, it's very similar. Look, look at the, I mean, DCAU chat with Bruce Tim and his people. They, they really did lay the foundation for something like that with context and history and things. Years going on, decades uh, going on, chat. And now it's really cool that we're in a spot where, because eventually, chat, we'll get to that next Endgame-esque movie. Where I'm hoping it'll be Doctor Doom who is doing some fucking evil shenanigans or whatever, what he thinks is best for everybody. And then we could think, like, we'll be, that'll be years, years later, chat. And we can think back when 
like a uh, like a big touchstone of like the previous generations was when Iron Man died or Captain America, uh, Steve Rogers retired and stuff. And but now here we are, like 15 years later, and it's a whole new era. And it's like, Jesus, remember when fucking Iron Man died, and now we're already already here? I, I, to me, that just kind of blows my mind. It just kind of blows my mind, Chad. So. The MCU is going to continue on forever, Chad, because they have all these cool heroes uh, that they can establish now that I'm very excited to see their debut and, and reincorporate people. We have the X-Men, the X-Men, Chad. Like, that's the thing, the MCU, the MCU that we've had, Chad. Think about this. Katie! Katie, I'm sorry I missed you. Welcome to stream, Katie. Hope you're doing very well. Good to see you. Good to see you. I just got off on a spiel. But, like, can you imagine, Chad, we've had the MCU, and for the most part, it's been really good. Like, I've been very impressed by a lot of the films, Chad. It's, it's incredible. And we still haven't introduced the X-Men, the mutants. We still haven't introduced the Fantastic Four. There's still so much of the cosmic stuff that we haven't even really gotten into. We just touched the surface of it. It's like, oh my god. There is just so much fucking content that the... Like, I'm really interested to see how... I mean, with Doctor Doom, Doctor Doom alone, like, how you handle a villain like that? He's the Kim G. He's like a competent Kim Jong-un. And he, he's, he has his own countries. People love him, chat. And he's smarter. He's smart as hell. He's a master of technology and magic. And you have to fight him, but also work with him occasionally. Like that guy's gonna be so incredible. Like uh, that, that's that's a that's a prime opportunity. Doctor Doom is my favorite Marvel villain. Uh, and it's just such a goddamn shame he's been so mistreated in the live action films. But can you honestly imagine what that's going to look like, Chat? Like, I want Doom to come in and it's like, Thanos didn't know what he was doing. I know what I'm doing. I love that. Like, my whole pitch for Doctor Doom, I've talked about this before, Chat. Motherfucking Doom. Exactly. Where I want him to come in saying Tony Stark wanted to create a suit of armor around the world. And he failed. But I won't. Like, I want him to, like, you know, just kind of stick the goddamn knife in us and twist it, chat, mentioning all these past heroes and look, at, and look at them as failures and things. That, to me, is fascinating. I would love that. And you lean into your history. You lean into the context which you've already established, chat. That's going to be incredible to see. That's going to be, God loves man kills. Yeah, but the X-Men story. There's so much stuff they can do. And I think with Doom and the mutants, and uh, I think they should uh, make some changes to the X-Men, chat. I think they should make them even more relevant for our times. I mean, there's a lot of content to look at. Uh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Bad shoes, think of the puppies. People are not ready at all. They have uh, thought Endgame took breaths away. Wait until we get the characters like Beyonders and Galactus. But cool. Yeah, exactly, but cooler. Yeah, but Galactus is still out there, Chad. There's so many things we can do. Honestly, Chris, I have a question. Have you played and or done any role-playing games? I know there are stars, but have you experienced? I uh, I played D&D like a couple times back in the day. Not like seriously, just like, ah, I created my character and did like a two-hour session, like, maybe three times. Um, that's about it. Not not my thing. Not my thing, personally. I just prefer video games. But all respect to the people that enjoy it. You know, it's been going on for decades, so I get it. But, yeah, this is not my thing. Uh, question. I'm going to choose graphics. Favorite comic book artists? Mine are Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Sr., very good. Steve Ditko, Steve, uh, and Sal Buscema. Uh, uh, oh, a very good question. Um... Darwin Cook. Darwin Cook is not only one of my... He was one of my favorite comic book writers. I should have mentioned that before. Darwin Cook. Uh, and he sadly passed away a couple years ago, Chad. He wrote and he drew. And he did this whole... Like, his style was very reminiscent of the Silver Age of comic books. And it was beautiful. I, I wish I had it here. It's in a box. But if you guys have ever read DC, uh, The New Frontier, it is. he wrote it and he drew it. It's gorgeous. It's so goddamn gorgeous, Chad. He like I I, I wish oh God. It was it's no one no one draws like him um, now, which is a damn shame because I would love to. It's kind of, and also it's it's it, it's it's I guess you could say maybe Bruce Tim was influenced by Darwin Cook to a degree because that they have kind of have some similarities to uh, to each other, and so that's, that's the only place I know I can go to Darwin Cook esque art. And I wouldn't say it's straight Darwin Cook, but Darwin Cook always stuck out uh, stood out in my mind. Um, the another person who I always really liked is oh shit I forget his name he, he did Daredevil with Brian Michael Bendis did he pass away he might have passed away I don't remember um Daredevil Brian Michael Bendis let me see here I always forget the um the guy's uh name is it Aleve who is it oh god what's his Maleve oh, I always forget his name chap here we go. Let me go ahead and look it up. Sorry about this. I just forget his name. 
Alex Maleev. I don't know if he's... I, don't th I think he's still alive. Alex Maleev, chat, uh, is a fantastic artist. If you've not seen his work, I highly, highly recommend it, chat. It's gorgeous. Probably for, like, a noir style, like Daredevil or Batman. Um, that always that always really stood out to me. But, um, but yeah, those are a couple of my favorites, definitely. I mean, I mean if you, I'll throw Bruce Timm and his people in there as well. Bruce Timm is a comic book artist, sure. Uh, I mean, I guess he's technically an animator. But, uh, but Darwin Cook, uh, Cook is the number one for me. And... Uh, Comic books were lesser uh, when he passed away, sadly, because he did some amazing work, Chad, in, 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 in DC The New Frontier, in Catwoman. He did a, had an excellent Catwoman run. He's done Batman stories before. Amazing writer and artist. Yeah. He's going to be British. Any, uh, any show you like to watch on a lazy day? Honestly, oh, that's a good question. Because I haven't really done that in a long time, because based on my schedule, I mean, what I'm watching right now, I can tell you, it's not even though it's 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 for uh, my content. I've been loving watching Batman Beyond again, and getting a new appreciation for that show, just how it's written in the world they established in the characters, and just the history that was established with stuff like Batman made series and, and you know some of the other shows as well, Superman. Um, that that always stood out to me. And I've been really enjoying that, so I've been watching that and preparing that for reviews, of course, for content creation. But that's what I would say most recently I've been enjoying. Then you welcome to stream. Just taking questions from people. I am about to end it uh, soon because I'll have to head up to Austin in a bit because we're starting at 9.15. Uh, we are starting at 9.15, so I will have to get going in a bit. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I want to do the L food dive, at least the food dive. <laughs> oh, foot... Foot dive? Foot dive. I don't remember. I'm familiar with that that saying that he did. Yeah. But yeah, but that was some of the that's Yeah, top of my head, that I would say a Batman Beyond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'll answer one more question. Shall I answer one more question? I will bid you adieu. I'm sorry that I have to leave you, chat. Sorry that I have to leave you, but I do got to go up there. We got to talk about Monster Hunter and all those other things. Turn the Joke, which I love Turn the Joke. That's like my, that's my favorite DC animated film of all time, uh, which I've done review of, chat. You can watch that full review on... Uh, uh, my YouTube channel, Class in the Glass. I just love Mark Hamill's Joker. Behind all oh, the stern and batter reins, you're nothing but a little boy crying for mommy and daddy. It'd be funny if it wasn't so pathetic. Ah, what the heck? I'll laugh anyway. <laughs> and he beats the shot of him. <laughs> oh, I love it, Chad. So goddamn good. <laughs> yeah, Chad. Poor Tim Drake. Poor Tim Drake. Say hello, JJ. <laughs> oh, it was wonderful. It was wonderful, Chef. Oh, sorry, I think we'll never see the trivia show, Glee. We're going to see the, tri the trivia show will happen. It got delayed until, I don't know, I know what Corey said, but it's going to happen. It's going to happen in 2021. That's all I can say. I was like, ah! <laughs> oh. Right now I'm about to make dinner uh, for stream. Very cool, man. Chat, please do check out Vanisphere streams. He has a variety of streams. There's a lot of cooking streams. Might be making uh, my family's rum ball recipe, my Polish rum ball recipe on one of his upcoming streams. So do check that out, chat. Mark Camel Joker pissed me the fuck off in the Arkham series. Yeah, man, yeah, yeah, he's fucking with you a lot. It's true. It's very true. Mm hmm. Yeah, well, if there's no more questions yet. That's totally fine. I can then bid you adieu. Wait, the trivia show is worse than Sarah. Ha, no, it's good, but it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. We got all the kinks worked out. All the kinks. It's just it's the contract stuff. Chat the contract stuff, but it's it's happening. It's happening. Will happen first. The trivia show or working on Discord. Discord. <laughs> Discord will happen first. Chat. To reiterate, to reiterate, now I will bid you adieu. Thank you for participating in this class in the glass cast chat for your ass little bit of sass. I hope you had fun with it. But as I said at the top chat, please do go ahead and check out the Discord and go to Project Lazarus chat. It's one of the categories that's been created. And give me some feedback. Give uh, myself and the mods some feedback. How to make it better. What kind of content you want to incorporate into it. Shall we give you an example of something I will do with the uh, connecting with the Patreon Discord, which will be Watch Party chat. Oh, you know, all talk amongst yourself while watching a film, commenting I'm over it. I think it'll be a good time. Don't the five minutes. See you in an hour. So, yep, see you guys in an hour. I'll be, I'll see you then, chat. That's when I'll be. Up in, uh, good up in Austin, talking about Monster Hunter and uh, some uh, some stories, a little bit of variety. It should be a good time. But please do check out the Discord chat and let me know what changes you want to be made and what content you want to be featured on there and how to make it just better overall. It'll be a big help to myself and and uh, 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 Austinic and Josh and Vanny, who I'll eventually make a uh, mod. 
But chat, now I must bid you adieu. For those who don't know, I stream every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, starting around 5.30, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. I also stream chat on Saturdays and Sundays around 9, 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you want to follow me on social media, you can check me out on Twitter at Chris J. Herman. Also on Facebook under Chris Herman and on Instagram and Discord chat under Mr. Revan7. If you want to see my previous recorded streams, Let's Plays, video reviews, movie reviews, cartoon reviews, uh, uh, reactions, uh, preview commentaries, full-length commentary chat or video reactions, uh, check out my YouTube channel, Class in the Glass, and also chat. As I showed you before, I highly encourage you to check out my Patreon class in the glass chat. You can gain access to full audio commentaries and full video reactions to movies and cartoons. And also, at the Tier 5 level and up, the ability to submit questions for my class in the glass cast of a little bit of ass and then some of that sass, which I host every Thursday like today. You can subscribe at a $1, $2, $5... $10, $15, or $25 level chat complete with your little title. You can be a Huckleberry, a Space Cowboy, a Jedi, a Cape Crusader, a Revenite, or a Juicy Gangsta. And you get access to content chat. No matter what you subscribe to, you get access to something. But obviously, at the tier 15 level and beyond, you get access to absolutely everything, chat. I uh, have some polls up there, chat, for some upcoming content by creator. But you can have access to Jingle All the Way, full-length video and audio reaction chat. Also, the Muppet Christmas Carol, full-length video and audio reaction. I uh, have some bonus commentary chat, which will always be available at the $2 level and up no matter what. Santa Claus is coming to town up there, chat, along with the full audio version as well. At Frosty, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Got the Wolverine trilogy up there right now, chat. All available as bonus commentaries and more coming very soon. Rudolph will be uploaded, chat, probably most likely tomorrow morning just because my schedule is super busy doing all this other stuff and preparing all this stuff. But, chat, thank you for all the support. Really do appreciate who we still have with us. It's Nia Brownie, Dark Slayer, Cyban. Thank you. I will drive safe. Uh, Dark Slayer, Firewolf, Produce Graphics, Osnick, ba -ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba, who knows it? Uh, Ace Rock, Milky Mac. Uh, I know Josh was here. Josh, thank you. Uh, Glee. Uh, who else? We have Missy Randoms. I saw earlier. Thank you. Uh, ba -ba Bat Shield, Katie, Emerald Jester. Everyone who stopped by the stream, Edman. Thank you for all. Thank you all for stopping by. Hope you had some fun. Chris Kamirovich, thank you so much. Hope you had some fun. And I'll be back tomorrow, chat. Probably with a, uh, well, ooh, actually a number of things, chat. Tomorrow, going to let you know right now, chat, we will be doing a watch party for the finale of The Mandalorian Season 2, chat, okay? I'm not going to watch it beforehand, chat, so you're going to see my natural reactions. No spoilers, of course. No spoilers. Uh, we're going to be watching that tomorrow, chat. I'm super, super excited. I've been loving the season. It's been so goddamn good. Last, last, uh, last week's episode was great with Bill Burr, chat. The Star Wars, as he once said. Uh, cannot wait for that. Probably we'll be doing a... I'm, no, I'm, I'm trying to think. Like, Because that might be a long episode, so I don't know if I'm going to do another movie review. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. I might do a tune review. I might do a tune review and do the watch party. Maybe we'll hold off on the movie just because I know the wind is going to be long. And I might play some Cyberpunk. And maybe I'll think about playing some Hades, too. I might be doing single-player shenanigans. We'll see, chat. We'll see. But uh, thank you guys for all the support. Before I leave, I should read someone. There's one auto to do. Or uh, yeah, I'll be Batman Beyond again. <laughs> I just love the show so much. We'll get we'll get to some more of the other cartoons. Yeah, but Batman Beyond is so good. I mean, this is indeed the way. This is the way. Quite right, Milk Mac. Let me go ahead and raid somebody. Chat. Uh, I think I saw um, Faye Lynn a uh, streaming chat. And usually I'm not able to catch her nowadays, but uh, we should. Oh, Back for Blood. I forgot Back for Blood Alpha's out right now. I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys uh, see her. Faye Lynn's one of my favorite streamers. Chat. She has a fantastic personality. Uh, she does. Uh, she's a voice actress too. Just wonderful streamer chat she had a huge impact on how mine looks uh, aesthetically so please go ahead and uh say hello to her i would appreciate it, chat there we go let me make sure i got her name right yes excellent check out back for blood too chat i forgot that maybe i'll play maybe i'll try back for blood tomorrow i forgot about that shit so maybe i'll be back for blood tomorrow chat but until then have a fantastic evening and bye bye